following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Let's go, baby! Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Thursday, November 8th, 2018, season 14, episode number 76. Welcome to another edition of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're talking Cowboys football with you guys for an hour. Got my regular co-host here, and uh, we're going to jump right in. We got to catch up on a lot of injuries. Uh, This Cowboys injury report looks pretty as full as I remember seeing it this season. Uh, so there's a lot of guys we got to catch up with there. An interesting uh, note on the injury report for the Eagles uh, that we'll talk a little bit about. Dave has his uh, update for us on the Philadelphia Eagle defense. We'll jump into that. Um, we also have a new segment that we're going to be trying out this uh, today in our third segment. Uh, we've got a guy from DraftKings uh, by the name of Stephen Buchanan. Um, he is a fantasy expert that we're going to start adding in on Thursday afternoon to do a quick segment with us for our fantasy players out there just to be able to give you guys some really quick uh, fantasy notes and nuggets that you might want to think about this weekend. I know we're getting to that part of the year where for fantasy players, this is where you're really gotten to p- trying to position, get yourself ready for the playoffs. Not going to be a long segment for those of you that are not fantasy players. We'll also have him talk a little bit about some of the players on the Cowboys and the Eagles that may be of note. Uh, from a fantasy standpoint, and some of those matchups that could affect just the game overall. Um, And uh, and then we'll get to the end of the show. Got a lot to do. A whole lot to do. So let's jump right in. Let's talk injuries. Um, Let's get a catch-up. I'm going to run down this list, and uh, and I want you three to tell me what you know about where they are from an injury standpoint. Let's start first with Taco Charlton. He has a shoulder injury. Did not participate in practice yesterday. Where does he sit? Oh, he wasn't out there today either. So Still having a shoulder injury. Still having an, a shoulder injury. Yep. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> yep. Not Inside good jokes aren't really good when it's just us and yeah. most people don't even maybe not know what the joke was. Yeah. So, anyways, he's still hurt. He's he, hurt. I don't. He didn't practice today, or he's not out there now. So it doesn't look like he's going to play. Not a not a great sign for him. Uh, Randy Gregory is out there. Okay. So that's that's something to watch. Which. We'll see how they shuffle it. David Irving's not out there, so I would guess they are going to have to shuffle their defensive line once again. I would guess no on Taco, yes on Randy, no on Irving. That's significant. Those are two people that would play a significant amount of time on your defensive line, correct? Right. I'll pick up some guys that were out there. Deontay Thompson, ribs. He was out there? He was. So he's having ribs. He's having ribs. Okay, good. Yeah, he's having ribs for dinner. Uh, yeah. Jeff Swain. Not out there, then out there. Not really sure because he did not participate like in the stretching part of it, but mm-hmm. then he was up working on the side with the trainers. Then he got back out there doing stuff. He's got a lot of metal going on there, this knee, big brace. Got, big, oh, quite a brace big, going on with his knee. But he was out there like catching passes and stuff. So, so but, optimistic about him for now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound well, optimistic. It just shows you how bad the tight end position is it really i i, I don't think i think if, if they had it, let's say witten was the starter and he was the backup i don't think he'd be playing i really don't i could be wrong but i just think they're like we kind of need, need you yeah, let's need put him. that yeah. thing on his knee and let's go play yeah I, I tend to agree with that and it's interesting to note too that uh they're in shorts today they were didn't even wear helmets yesterday so but they're not gonna do like a real practice before they play this game which that's not surprising because it's a short week but it's more mental reps anyway. You kind of get in the game plan down. What do you do in this situation? How do you react to this? But Those kind of things. That makes it even harder to get a gauge on who's actually available to play right. in a full contact football game because running around for us in shorts least, is yeah. not you know, for us exactly. I mean, they know, yeah. but. They don't let us partake in those conversations, which I think they should. Another conspiracy it, against the Cowboys. To give the Super Bowl champion Eagles twelve <laughs> days to prepare, and the Cowboys C-O-N. three. Conspiracy. Give me a, an update on Jeff Thomas because if Sean Lee now, Joe we, Thomas. I'm sorry, Joe Thomas. Now that we know that Sean uh, is is out for a little bit, um, you'd like to have Joe Thomas back. I think it helps to have Joe Thomas back. Where does he sit uh, with the uh, foot injury? Making progress according to Jason Garrett, but not not on that level. Still not ready to no. to be playing. No, 
I don't think so. So how does that affect the linebacker position? Uh, obviously, you've got Damian Wilson. Um, is that enough, I guess, is the best question. Wolf Hunter and the younger Smith. Get mm-hmm. after it. Go. You're young. You're fresh. Play. Play I'm lots of snaps. Well, the, 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 the expectation is that yeah. they are going to play. That's my question. Do you that's, think that that's enough? You think yes. that's enough? You feel good about Don't that? Don't get hurt. Okay. Don't yeah. get hurt. Yeah. I mean, you How might. does that change things, though, with the struggles that you're having on the D line? And what is that? What do you mean? I mean, some of the guys are kind of banged up, and like honestly, when you mentioned, for example, and I know we haven't been relying on David Irving or Randy Gregory, but then now you have Taco also kind of banged up. You got uh, Demarcus Lawrence, who he ha- he's been playing, but still kind of keep in mind that he's been also dealing with the shoulder injury, even though he says he's fine, it's still something to look for. So there are several guys there that are struggling a little bit health-wise, which I think maybe is starting to affect the game because they haven't been as productive as, as they've been in the past. And obviously when the line has been playing well, again, you get uh, Jalen Smith and Layton playing really good too and it's all like a a combination of things i don't disagree that the fact that they did not have they weren't at full streak of defensive line and then they had their worst game the linebackers had their worst game i don't think it's coincidence but i will say this you you talk about last game you've got gregory out chuck um taco got hurt taco probably won't play gregory probably will so you, you can flip there um they're gonna stay the same at tackle then at linebacker sean lee didn't is not gonna play who plays more there? I think that's what you were asking was depth-wise, Mar- March Lillard. Yeah, not only Covington. depth-wise, but also when you think about it, I, I guess if if you believe that maybe the reason why uh, they – or if you believe the concept that they did get worn down as the game went on, then maybe an answer for that would be you had one less guy rotating. Because if you notice, Sean Lee, basically what they do is they rotate those three – linebackers yeah. by series so one series you'll have two of them out and one will be out and then the next there'll be the other one is in and he'll take one out does that affect that's my question is mm. does not having sean lee affect that rotation to the point yes. where those guys are out there and and maybe don't have the ability to stay as um maybe they're not as as good when they're having to play as many reps as it would take for them to play the whole game I would like to have Sean Lee available and I would like to have Joe Thomas available and it could probably help. But I mean, that was kind of my point is I hear what you're saying. Sorry, you don't have them. Uh, Absolutely. There's no, nobody's going to feel sorry for him. I get that. Well, but they're 22 and 23 and we weren't talking about this when they were playing really well when Sean Lee was hurt. I mean, Leighton Van Der Esch got the start because of an injury in the first place yeah. and they played great for about three weeks and no, and people, we were sitting here like, how are they going to rotate these guys? Is that going to throw them off their game? So no, they don't, they don't need to rotate. They need to play better than they did last week. Yeah. And I feel reasonably confident that they will because they've played well more often than they haven't. So what do you think about signing like Justin Durant or somebody like that? <laughs> oh Bring my him God. in. I'd say you got your three, Damien's your Sam and base, and then let the young guns. Marsh, Let's Marsh keep Lillard, Johnson, doing. Smith, Jones comes in here. Keep brooking around? Brooking. Yeah. Yeah. Available? Yeah, I think so. I think you can bring in Zach Thomas, maybe. Maybe. It's all him. Brady? What Brady's about around. Covington, a draft pick? Oh, ah, that was a good one. But that I might mean, work. Special teams. I know. <laughs> That's... Ideal. I don't know. I don't need to rotate these guys. I need my two cornerstone linebackers to to play better. I play like talked, badass. I haven't talked about Joe Thomas in forever. I forget. Sean Lee and Joe Thomas both hurt in the same at the same time. Was there a game where they were both out? Like at the Cowboys. Sean got this? hurt in Seattle, and Joe hurt his foot. Um, what game was that? That would have. That was Houston. Maybe it was a few weeks ago. Week five. Maybe they did play. Uh-huh. Okay, maybe the Detroit game. I yeah, I, I feel like it wasn't at the same time. I just wonder. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They have they played a game with just really them two. I don't know if they have yet. I don't recall. Maybe Houston. Yeah, I don't think well, so. They were both healthy. They would have both been healthy in week one and week two. Oh, but that was a while ago. Well, yeah, I know, but that's my, that's my point. Like when just you're just relying on Jalen and Van Der Esch. Had they kind of had that before without any experience depth behind them like that? I'm gonna say Houston probably, okay. but. Sorry, it played well. Thank you. Yesterday we talked about the uh, Philadelphia offense, and a name you threw out was Darren Sproles, who's been out for them. The expectation was that he was going to be act this, back this week. Dave, there was a report that just came out from Adam Schefter. What do you say? He tweaked his hamstring in practice, and he's down again, 
which I would never cheer for an injury for anybody, but helps the Cowboys. It definitely helps the Cowboys. And you had smart Alex in my mentions today, like big deal. Was he going to play quarterback for the, like, why does this matter? It's like, it matters, dude. And that's, a, if you don't think it matters, you haven't seen Darren Sproles. He's Sproles a, mis, a, a mismatch yeah. player. He can return punts. He catches the ball out of the backfield. I mean, I've seen him kill the Cowboys for two different teams. Actually. Did anybody watch the game last week? I mean, De- nobody's yeah. Dion nobody Lewis excited about Dion right. Lewis. And right, he goes yeah. out and does. I mean, and yeah. he's the same Which kind of player. Same, That's uh, same well, type. Of Sproles guy. is probably a better player. At least in his career, he's been a better player than Dion Lewis. But it's that kind of player for sure. He yeah. did not account well for receivers catching the ball out of the backfield in that game, and so it matters that Darren Sproles can't play. Uh, Wendell Smallwood and Corey Clement can still do the job. Yeah, but they'll do those kinds of things. They don't scare me as much as Darren Sproles does, even at 45 or what how he's he's been in the league man it feels like since i was 10 years old and so i don't know that's it's a significant development all right real quick um and this is just for for people to just kind of keep an idea of where he is uh tavon austin um he's still obviously going to be out but have we heard anything more about where he is in his progress progress back is this something that may be coming in a week or two? Is this something that really is going to be, Here's, at best case scenario, you're looking at late November, December? I'm going to peel the curtain back on the way like beat writers do stuff, which is like depending on the injury, you're like hounding people for information, especially like if you're like, well, can he get back? What what game? Tavon Austin or for any injury where, you know, and again, when he got hurt, there were rumblings that maybe IR was a possibility. And in a situation like that, if it's very obvious he's not coming back for four or more weeks, it just kind of flies under the radar. It falls in that category. Of, I'm not going to worry about it until it, it falls in the category of he ain't playing against the Eagles. So I got other stuff I got to worry about. And then yeah. in another two or three weeks, people will start saying, where's Tavon at? Is he, is he getting close to coming back? And so I feel like we're still a little ways from okay. that. I mean, so this is not a, a thing that's even imminent. And I'm not talking this week. I'm talking about next week. It doesn't feel like it's imminent. It feels like it's something that's farther off than that. I don't get the impression he'll be ready okay. until maybe after Thanksgiving. Think, yeah, like Thanksgiving or maybe the game after Thanksgiving or I haven't been December. even seen him around in the locker room either. He's been around, but like, maybe. yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you keep it again. Yeah. You go to practice and you're like, well, Jeff Swain's on the cords and, you know, Taco's doing this and Tavon's just want, I mean, he's at practice, but he's not. He doesn't look like a guy who's probably standing in a ball cap. Yeah, thing, wearing yeah. a ball cap and a hoodie, and you know, chatting with the offensive coaches, and yeah. looking like a guy who's not planning on playing soon. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, Dave's going to give us a scouting report on this Philadelphia defense. It's going to be an interesting one. We'll do that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. If you're like me and you love, I mean, if you have a Fight! thing then cutting the cord is scary but then i found out i could switch to direct tv now and still get the live sports i love no satellite needed no bulky hardware no annual contract just get the live sports you love try direct tv now for ten dollars a month for three months visit directtvnow.com direct tv now more for your thing that's our thing use code real deal limited time price for a little package after three months we use monthly at full price currently minimum forty dollars unless canceled prices may change new subscribers only cancel anytime content varies by package and may be limited restrictions apply star sports tours is the only official fan travel partner of the dallas Cowboys offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel Will McClay and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm and a Cowboys can cooler. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word COWBOYS. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. While a player could look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com football. 
to the break. Welcome back. It's the second segment of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, talking Cowboys versus Eagles. And Dave is going to give us uh, the scouting report on the Philadelphia Eagle defense. Tough unit. What you got? Tough unit, but a banged up unit. Hmm. Uh, big time. Like we, we talk a lot about the injuries Washington is dealing with. Uh, this is... You know, you look at the Eagles' numbers. They fall into 17th in total defense. They're 25th against the pass. They are second. 25th. 25th. That's shocking. Fifth. Yeah. Carve them up. Yeah. We'll, we'll get <laughs> to that. Go get them. We'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> just salivating over there. Jackie still just... still second against the run. 84 mm. yards per game. Mm. And fifth fifth in scoring. Which you So you're like, well, this what happened to this mighty unit? Why are they mediocre? Everybody's hurt. Um, starting with most importantly, in my opinion, Rodney McLeod, uh, their free safety gave him a lot of money a couple off seasons ago and he's played, he's played very well. He's not back there. Um, Tim Jernigan, defensive tackle who Mm -hmm. partnered so well, the guy they traded for, he was, he wrecked shop next to Fletcher Cox. He is on NFI. He hasn't been able to play. Whoa. Uh, yeah. What's his issue? Um, his knee, I think. He, he, he's, so he's been out since. He's limited in practice camp. right now. Like He's he's kind of like Noah Brown. Like He's on the field, but they haven't activated him to the active roster. I don't Got expect it. to see him this weekend. Superstar, first-round draft pick, Derek Barnett, mm-hmm. had two and a half sacks in the first few weeks of the season. He's on IR. Uh, reserve linebacker, Paul Werlow. Reserve safety, Chris Maragos. So they've got three starters and two other like key contributors on IR right now. On top of that, uh, you got Jalen Mills dealing with uh, an injury, cornerback. an ankle. Yeah, they're starting cornerback Jalen Mills, LSU guy, uh, dealing with an ankle. Uh, Corey Graham, Graham, their replacement safety, uh, has been in and out of the lineup with injuries of his own. So they're banged up. Um, but they still got that one notable dude down in the middle, don't they? They really do. And that's the funny thing is, like, <laughs> this pass rush looks completely different than it did even a year ago. Like, mm-hmm. they shipped Vinnie Curry off to Tampa. Um, Jernigan hasn't been playing. They got rid of uh, – damn, they got rid of another end that they had. Derek Barnett is on Graham. A, No, they oh. still have – well, they, they have Brandon Graham, but then – But they got some horses. They got Fletcher Cox. Yep. He's really good. Um, he's – He's really he's really good, and uh, <laughs> he scares me. I mean, so that it's it sucks because the things that the Eagles don't do well are things that the Cowboys can't take advantage of or haven't been able to take advantage of, and the things that they do really well are exactly what the Cowboys want to do. They want to run right at you, right? The Eagles don't let people do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna read some stats off to you against Atlanta. They gave up 74 total rushing yards. Those are good running backs. Against Both of them. Tampa, it was 43. Against Indy, it was 68. Against the Titans, it was 70. Minnesota, 77. Slipped up and gave up 150 total rushing yards to the Giants, who they beat by 30 points. <laughs> uh, they gave up 121 to Carolina and 70 to the Jags last week. Your leading rushers. Okay, I'll just throw this out there. Saquon Barkley had 130 yards against him, played the game of his life so far. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the only running back. That has tallied 50 yards against this front so far. Oof. The only one. Uh, Atlanta's leading rusher, 36. Tampa, 22. Indy, 33. Tennessee, 46. Minnesota, 42. Carolina, 49. Jacksonville, 43. Now, the one thing you can say about that, though, is Saquon is, is the only the best back. caliber, high caliber running back in that That's group, fair. except for maybe McCaffrey, if yeah, you want to put him in he, that category. I bet he did some other things. McCaffrey. Catching passes out of the back. I will, sl- I will throw this sliver of hope out at you. Yeah. Four, well, a sliver of hope, depending on how cynical you want to be. Four different quarterbacks have been their team's leading rusher against the Eagles, ah. including Cam Newton, who went for 71. Ah. So, ah. I'm just. Yeah, what's that look, okay. Amber? <laughs> you think that the Cowboys are gonna do that? They, okay. They, they have to. They do have to. They have. That to. sounds There's great. no way they can look at those numbers and not say we got to get him involved in the running. Game. Unless they, it's what you think we're gonna do. <laughs> if they try to line up and smash the ball right up the gut of this defense, they're gonna have a bad time. That's just what I think. I yeah. think. So underestimating Sulafilo. I mean, maybe. <laughs> really or Adam Redmond. We don't know yet. 
whoever. We, we didn't really talk about that real quick. We saw that at practice today. Yesterday, I think Redmond got a lot of snaps at left guard. Today, it looked, it looked like. So yeah, they're trying to, trying to see out. But without... When you're doing it in shorts, can you really tell anything other than do they have the assignment, right? That's what I was just I saying know. to Rob and Nick at practice. I was like, how are they supposed to evaluate these guys? Yesterday was a walkthrough with other no than helmets. Do they know the assignment? Like, that's a part of it. Yeah. Sure. Seeing yeah. the assignment, know what you're supposed to do. 50's Here's the mic. 50's the mic. Which <laughs> Nick Nick had a very uh, – he had a useful conversation where what the thing they like about Adam Redmond is he's incredibly smart. Very right? smart. I actually, I mean, I, I talked to uh, Will McClay a little bit this morning. Uh, he's doing a special edition show. talked to him this morning. He said – he is extremely smart in understanding things. Uh, I would have thought that when I saw the roster that said Harvard. I would have already assumed that. <laughs> you didn't need to hear it? No, but yeah. but from a football smart situation, it sounds like the, that's one thing that will help him. So if has got the you know, drafted higher and played more games. Yeah. Smart's seem- one thing, but is, is he strong? Because if well, you're going to be up against that beast, you better be strong. I was about to be a jerk and say, it's awesome that you're smart, but is that really going to help me against Fletcher Cox? Yeah. Because no, I know. No, and well, that's not directed yeah. at you. But like, I mean, go. I mean, I, if you're a Cowboys fan, you've seen him play. But like, go throw on the all twenty-two of Fletcher Cox and just watch him like either yeah. just rip past double teams or just push two guys into the backfield, which allows Michael like Bennett to one loop on each arm. Yeah, he's just bench pressing. He's just like, and the yeah. crazy thing, he still gets. He's still leading the team in sacks, even though. Every week the opponent comes in like we got to do something with this guy. He's got he's got four sacks. Uh, I want to say five tackle for loss. He's double teamed every week. It doesn't matter because even he's blowing it up, and then Michael Bennett's looping behind him and just getting the free run at the quarterback because there's nobody left to block him. I would play Suafilo. I would. I, would, I think I would too because there's give something me the about more him too. Player. And Amber, you you've talked to him a little bit um, in the locker room, but there's something about his demeanor like it's like. I don't know if this is good or bad. It maybe not fit exactly what Mark Colombo's style is, but I just uh, I, the whole it's going to be too big for him. I don't think this would be. I don't think anything uh, really yesterday phases he, him. He was really upset. He's a really nice guy, very friendly guy. Always says hi, mm-hmm. how are you doing? But yesterday I walked by, didn't say a word. I'm like, oh, he's playing. Hey, he's playing. H- how are you? And he's like, uh, 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 I'm just upset and I'm trying to calm down. I'm like, why? What happened? He's like, just just practice. And he stayed out there longer. And he said he made he one mistake. And I don't know what the mistake was, but he made it. And that really upset him. He's like, I cannot make that kind of mistake. I'm like, yeah. well, you need to calm down. Like, mm-hmm. that's what practice is for, for you to make those mistakes here and fix them, work on it. And then the problem is for him right now, yeah. practice is an audition. Yeah, exactly. Right? He's, he's auditioning for an opportunity that may be his only opportunity. It's like when Dan, That's the hard part. When yeah. Dan yeah. Bailey was a rookie and there was five kickers on the team, ser- seriously, five mm-hmm. kickers, every practice kick was a huge yeah, deal. Yeah, it's an audition. That was. Yeah. But I told, I told him, I'm like, look, uh, the fact that you're feeling this way shows that you care and you're, you're invested in it and you're wanting to try and do the best that you can. And mm-hmm. you always want that in a player. So... He, I mean, I didn't talk to uh, Redmond. Maybe Redmond. you should. Redmond. I think that's the fair thing to do. But you need to go today and talk to Redmond. He doesn't. He should have the benefit <laughs> of having. He speak Spanish. <laughs> he should have the benefit of having you come and sit down and well, counsel him the same way you did with Suofilo, right? Yeah, I'll analyze him right, today. Good. See Perfect. what the mood I'll is. I'll analyze. Him. She's like, I'll get to the bottom. He's <laughs> just going to lock up. a different, this. different guy because, like, the other day, practice or in the locker room. I think it was a Friday. And things were a little bit loose. He is like blaring his music, which is no different than a lot of guys that'll yeah. do that. Country music, though. Yeah, like I don't really. He, he Suofilo? Yes, like 10, 15 songs in a row. Not Redmond. Suofilo. Oh, Suofilo. Su, you're not giving him his due. Suofilo has been the DJ in the country locker room. music. No, no, it's everything. everything. Okay, he plays everything. 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 Okay. Every, I thought you mean like daily. No, he is no, in there. Day. It's country he time. Playing, he was playing cameo a couple weeks ago. Oh, he was playing. He plays he'll Marvin play, Gaye. He and plays, he'll play his so he knows what he's music. doing. Oh, he definitely knows. He'll play Hispanic music. That I'm like, how in the world you know this song? Like this is old school, like reggaeton, old school things that only. <sighs> he lived hard. in Houston for like five years. I mean, what does that? What does that mean? So he lived there for thirty. He does. What does that have to do with things? There's. Just Couldn't probably long, name one single strong song. Hispanic culture in Houston. It, that's all of Texas. I feel like it, it, Houston more so, though. I don't know. Maybe. I would. Start I haven't lived there in 25, 30 years, so maybe. I would start with Philo. Maybe it, 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 we've seen we've seen that left guard position. We've seen guys that come in that that play well there. So now, you've I, changed your mind from moving Lyle. 
They're not going to do it. No. I think he prefers that. I think he just knows that that's not going to happen. That's the thing I always say is like, do you want me? Yeah. Do you really want me to just wax on about like what I what I want to happen or what I think will will happen? happen. I didn't know that was a verb. I didn't either, but I like it. Wax on. You never never heard somebody say like, I got. I'm going to wax poetic. Yeah, I've heard that. I'm going to rant. Yeah, I've heard that. Going to go. But I wax. Last time I heard wax on was Karate Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Wax on. This week. Um, this week you watched it this prob- week. Yes. <laughs> um, favorite I think, movie, yes. I, I am firmly in the Connor Williams. I'm on that bandwagon. I'm not getting off, but it might be a blessing in disguise that he doesn't have to play this game. Which, and so I would I would play Suofilo too. I, yeah. I think he gives you the best bet against this guy. Which, Especially so- if you think he's if he's a strong player, like he plays with power, then to me, you may actually be better off and this is not about what Connor can be in the future. This is about where Connor is right now as a rookie. He's not going to come in as a rookie. I mean, we knew when he was drafted that all the scouting reports were talking about the fact that he's going to have to get stronger. He's going to have to put on some like he's got to do those things in order to get to where he wants to be. But you can't do that in that off season where you're just getting drafted and then you're coming into the NFL. He'll be there next year, the year you after know. that. So this may actually be a good thing, like he said, not only for Connor but for the Cowboys. If Suafila can play with power, or whoever's going to play that position can play with power. I think we've seen in the past. I remember a couple years ago against the Giants up there where they had those two big guys in the middle and the Cowboys did not feel comfortable running the ball in between the tackles. You saw a lot of – it might have been the first game we saw a lot of lucky Whitehead going side to side. I think that they're going to have to do that more than than ever in this game. I mean, run jet sweeps, run Dak to the side – do those things to kind of soften up the middle. I'm not, I'm not saying do a lot of counters around the goal line it would take four hours to get there. I'm talking about running misdirection type things. I to sure maybe would like to see that. I sure would. Because you, I hope, you I can't hope just do. move these guys. That's I agree. And I think that's misdirection. I think Dak needs to have an active role as a runner in this game, or at least the threat of it. I would love to see some jet sweep type of stuff or maybe like bubble screens. Like they don't ever throw those type. I mean, they do, but not I think recently. Cooper would be pretty good for that. I do too. Cooper had a really nice play, a slant over the middle. Might have been his last catch. 10-yard catch. Guys jumped on him. He got about 16 yards. That was the most Des-like thing that we've seen out of him in that first game. But, I mean, it, it wasn't just getting open and making a catch. It was, it was actually – you know, just kind of carrying defenders, being a big body guy. I, I thought that was the most encouraging thing that I saw out of him. And, I, I mean, you know, Dak's, Dak's got to make some plays down the field. Uh, Ronald Darby's a solid cover guy. Jalen Mills is a gimpy. He's also – he's he is an up-and-down, inconsistent guy. Um, Corey Graham is not your preferred free safety. He's also gimpy. They might have to play Avante Maddox, who is a rookie at safety. And then I I respect the hell out of Malcolm Jenkins, but uh, he's he's not like the he's not a elite cover safety. Like they put him in the box, he blitzes, he contributes to pressure. He's not you know he's not taking the deep ball away. I don't think. I mean he I I saw him give up balls down the field to Blake Bortle and D.D. Westbrook. So. The, you can take advantage of these guys, and they just they have to. It's unfortunate because this is it's strength on strength and weakness on weakness. I mean, the Cowboys are going to have to play well in the passing game, which is not something they've been able to do on you know, a regular basis. You know me, I would ask you if like Eric Allen was playing for them, but he he works here, so I, we've seen him. And good eat, point. So all right, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, uh, we got Steve Buchan- Buchanan joining us. He is from DraftKings. He's going to give us a little bit of information about fantasy football uh and we'll also get back into some more questions you guys call us 888-855-2297 is the number you can call us again at 888-855-2297 we'll be right back this is the break while a player could look good on paper it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of that's why the cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com slash football. 
It's time for Tailgate with the Otterbox Boys. Otterbox? The makers of those crazy protective phone cases? The one and only. They're also wild about protecting parking lot parties from sad drinks. It's why they made Elevation Tumblers. Rumor around the Crock-Pot is they're made from stainless steel with a copper lining to keep temps hot or cold. True. They even come in seven different sizes, up to 64 ounce. The Growler. Hmm. I like how Otterbox drinks. I mean, thanks. And that's been Tailgating with the Otterbox Boys. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation Tumblers at otterbox.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm and a Cowboys can cooler. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word COWBOYS. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel, Will McClay, and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Back to the break. Welcome back. We're in the final segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We got about 13 minutes left on the show. Nick, tell me a little bit about Tommy John. Script number one. Here in Cowboys Country, we always ride with our boys, always, regardless of record. But when it comes to underwear, you definitely don't want them riding up on your boys. That's why we always wear Tommy John, the revolutionary brand of underwear with stay put waistbands that keep everything in place no adjustment needed tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys get 20 percent off your first order so ride with the cowboys and make sure that your boys aren't whatever you you're, you're so lost right now <laughs> you were so close at to some point you just leave it alone but well yeah. you guys i mean jump in <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you can go with that it's just uh, yeah all right so let's get back into it uh we've got a, a special guest on the line we're going to start a new segment today uh, that we'll do each Thursday. We've got Steve Buchanan from DraftKings joining us to talk a little bit of fantasy football here. Steve, what's going on? Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, having me on. I, hope, I wish we were being under different pretenses. You know, I, after the loss last week, I feel like the move would be better if it, if it was a win. Yeah, yeah. It's it's part of the gig, unfortunately. But you're, I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not wrong. Part of what we do. It's okay. Fantasy never sleeps, right? That's right. You got it. <laughs> so what you got for us today? Let's start maybe with some uh, some some people that we should be looking at this week, maybe some starts and some sits that just based upon different uh, matchups around the league. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we'll just start with the Cowboys here with Amari Cooper. I mean, this is you know, certainly an encouraging debut for Cooper. Last week caught five of his eight targets for 59 yards and a touchdown. And look, they have a fantastic matchup coming up this week against the Eagles. Specifically, Cooper is going to be seeing uh, Jalen Mills. I don't know how familiar you guys are with Mills, but I mean, he has just been absolutely atrocious in coverage so far this season. He's been targeted against 49 times, allowing 32 receptions for 516 yards. This is just one of those matches that you dream about for Cooper here. And it's like he should really flourish in this spot here. And really, all the Cowboys receivers are in great spots here against such a poor Eagle secondary. Do you factor in at all? Like, I mean, you're looking at what other guys have done and against the Eagles, but obviously the Cowboys' passing game has been challenged, and, and Dak Prescott has, has not played, you know, to to the level that people maybe were expecting. What you, you're factoring in that kind of stuff? I mean, even though the Cowboys aren't haven't really, as Dave said earlier, this is kind of weakness on weakness. The Cowboys are passing sure. game versus the Eagles. Uh, does that weigh into to your you know value that you put on receivers like Cooper and Beasley? I mean, it certainly does, but like when you when you look at what some of these teams have done to these guys already, they're talking about the Eagles secondary. I mean, they just can't cover any guys when it goes through passing for the year. They just have so 
so many issues in that realm. So, you know, while that does come into factor, I mean, we saw what Cooper did so quickly already in the, pre- in the connection he had with Prescott. So I don't mind taking that spot. I mean, I wouldn't be going heavy with him, but I think, like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Cooper is in, is in such a, just a great spot that I'd definitely be looking at him. Would you expand that out to the quarterback and maybe consider Dak Prescott a sleeper-type quarterback this week if you had guys on buys or whatever the case might be? I mean, obviously, Prescott is someone that it's tough to trust on a week-in and week-out basis, but this is one of those matchups that he should be set up for success. I mean, we saw how well they did against the Jaguars earlier this season. So, I mean, he has that potential. It's just a matter of if he's going to be able to actually come through for us here. So, you know, Prescott is someone I probably use maybe just in tournaments, but he's definitely in play here in such a uh, good matchup for him. How about, like, the Eagles? Obviously, they got one of the best tight ends in the league. But after Ertz... They seem like they're they're tough for fantasy owners because they just play so many guys, and and then you, now you're factoring in Golden Tate, who has done great things in Detroit. But where do you put him when when now he's in this mix of a lot of uh, talented players over there? Yeah, I mean, obviously they're going to be feeding the ball to Tate. I mean, that's who they got for. I mean, it's detrimental to the value of Nelson Aguilar, who's just absolutely gone in terms of you know usage here, but. You know, I like Tate in this spot. I think he's someone that, you know, they're going to be looking to feature more and more. And it just really opens up for other guys, like Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, with Tate on the field now, it's just another threat there. And Ertz is on the field there as well. So, I mean, week in and week out, the Eagles are somebody you're definitely going to be looking at. But, you know, the, 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 the Cowboys aren't terrible defensively either. So, it's not a smash spot for them. I like the Cowboys matchup more than I do the Eagles. But, absolutely, I think this is good. I think this is going to be a pretty solid game uh, DFS-wise. <laughs> I got a question from my own personal team, and I think that my, some other people might have the same thing. You know, obviously you're dealing with buys. Uh, Justin Tucker, kicker for Baltimore. Who's a guy you could pick up in th- this week? Who's a, who's a t- waiver wire type guy that would have maybe a good matchup? Uh, specifically for kickers or just in general? Yeah, kickers. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, I, you, you have anybody? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, DraftKings doesn't really do kickers too much, no. so I mean, I can't say that you know, for the realm of kickers, that that's someone that I. Well, I just picked up into. a forty-five-year-old Adam Vinatieri. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that works. Dan Bailey. No thanks. <laughs> I mean, he, I mean the, lead, the leading scorer of all time. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. got to take a flyer. Yeah, yeah, right. That's not, not a bad guy. Yeah, and, right. Absolutely. And I'm absolutely. looking at you know, okay, who's kicking indoors or in Jacksonville or whatever? I don't, you know, I don't don't give me the guy that's going to Soldier Field this week. You know, or probably whatever. a good call. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I guess one one I'll throw out there is, uh, what do you think about uh, a guy that I've been having a hard time figuring out how much I want to use him in Adrian Peterson? He's a guy that's been up and down, has had some great weeks, but even on weeks when statistically he does well, from a fantasy standpoint, it hasn't been great. Uh, what do you think of a player like that? Yeah, so Peterson has been more you know game script dependent. I mean, in wins, he's averaging over twenty five DK fantasy points uh, in those games when they're when they're losses. He's averaging just six. And the problem is he's just not utilized enough in the passing game to really be someone that you can rely on. But in a game like this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're not terrible against the run, but we know how bad the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is overall. So, I mean, I feel like this is a, a spot where Peterson uh, should bounce back. Because last week he was, he was terrible. I mean, the, the Falcons just absolutely blew the doors off the, uh, the Redskins there. So he only scored 6.3 DK fantasy points, but this is a game where I think the Redskins should be in it a bit more than they were last week, so that should be just given the carries to Peterson. But like I mentioned, he just doesn't get enough work in the passing game. He's only seeing three targets at the most any time this season. But yeah, Peterson, he's only 5,700 this week. I think it's a really good spot for him, so I like him a lot. We're talking to Steve Buchanan of DraftKings. Uh, and before we let you go, we'll give you one more quick. Give me one guy that would be a sleeper type guy. Uh, that you that people might be on if they're playing you know daily fantasy they maybe look at and say hey here's a guy I might want to pick up for relatively cheap that can give me a big return. Yeah, I really like Dion Lewis this week. He's only forty six hundred. Yeah, we, we've seen we've seen his work <laughs> lately. Why do you like what he's doing? What has he done lately? <laughs> right, but I mean, I just again, this matchup sets up so nicely for him against the Patriots. I mean, first of all, we got to talk about the revenge narrative. He's going against his former team here, but they simply have no answers for running backs who catch passes off the backfield talking about the Patriots. I mean, if the Bills can scrape up 93 yards of offense in this situation, you know you got some issues there. I mean, but they're allowing an average of 51 yards per game in this scenario with three touchdowns scored. Uh, I don't think the Titans are going to win this game, but they're going to be playing from behind. So that just benefits the opportunity that Lewis is going to have here. And look, the Titans' offense is not somebody you really look for 
for offensive production, but in this type of game, I think it matches up so well for Lewis in this spot. All right, great. Steve, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next Thursday. Uh, Y'all take care. I mean, uh, appreciate that. Um, And we'll do that every week. So if you guys have any questions out there specific to fantasy football, you want to get those questions in, we'll definitely ask Steve in future weeks. Just send them to uh, Cowboys Break on Twitter, and we'll make sure we get those questions uh, to him. So Deion Lewis. (laughs) Yeah, we've seen his work. Um, before we before we end, that was I did fun. have a, did I, had I known he was going to start doing this, I would have probably started playing fantasy. I didn't, a I didn't tell you that. No, no. Sorry. Yeah, that got left out of the pre production the production oh. meeting. That's okay though. Nick knew. Cool. That I was did. fun though. Cool. <laughs> All right, so let's get this. I, I did have this one question I wanted to throw back to you, Dave. You were talking about uh, the the Eagles defense. Yep. How they fared against running backs coming out of the the backfield? Because he talked about Deion Lewis, obviously. And when you look at um, you look at um, a guy like Christian McCaffrey, you look at uh, Saquon Barkley. How did they fare when it came to situations where they were catching well, out of the backfield? We did see Cowboys do a little bit more with with Zeke last week. Let's not let's not compare anybody to what Saquon Barkley did against this team. I mean, I got to see it with my. I mean, he put up 300 yards of offense all on his own. But I mean, this is and a, they still ba- lost by 30. Wow. Yeah. Did you say 30? They lost by they 30? lost 34 to six. But no, I mean this. This is a bad. That's bad. This is That's a bad, bad pass defense all the way around. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, Christian McCaffrey caught six balls for fifty yards. Okay. Um, so that's a typical day for him. Nothing yeah, crazy. I mean, but it's first of all, it's a nice day, and it's something that we haven't seen the Cowboys consistently do with Zeke ever. I've given up. Last week, though, didn't he have like five catches? I want to say was it four or five last week? Oh no, he's catching the ball. He's just not going anywhere. I with got it. You. They, I mean, he did. Yeah, he had a nice screen, and it, usually when he does have a nice day, it's because a screen pops. Uh, you know, the Detroit pass being yep. the big exception, but it's the only time they've ever done that. Um, and they haven't gone back to it. I I would recommend they try to take advantage of it. I mean, again. Steve said it. I mean, I was trying to be nice to my LSU guy, but I mean, Jalen Mills is having a bad season. Darby's pretty good, but he can't do it all himself. Jenkins is not a cover guy. McLeod's hurt. Um, even Sidney Jones is their nickelback, and he's hurt right now too. Like they are not good. Um, so yeah, Zeke going against these linebackers and safeties, I think, is a nice matchup. Again, short routes, maybe throw in some bubble screens, some slants, like. You can make this thing easy for Dak, and I think he can still have a nice day. I just, you know, it was funny listening to, you know, he, he, Steve really inspired me. Like, I was like, yeah, well, maybe, maybe the Cowboys can get their passing attack going because yeah. I've just seen this song and dance too many times in a row to like really believe that they can. But if you look at it objectively, it is a really favorable matchup. Do, do you think this is among the worst pass defenses they faced this year? Off the top of my head, yeah. I mean, because they've played more good defenses than bad. Although I will say the Texans statistically were right. horrid against the pass, and it didn't I mean, seem to matter. Which yeah. that's I appreciate Nick for asking that question because I'm just like, yeah, okay, their secondary is bad. This passing attack right. is ranked 31st in the league. Like, so I got <laughs> to see it. Yeah, it's, it's an object. It's objectively a favorable matchup that hasn't mattered in the past. I'm playing the Eagles defense in fantasy. So you are. Yeah, starting them. I mean, just because of the game, and we've seen this type of game. We see turnovers. We see turnovers for touchdowns. I just don't – I mean, I, I think that this is one where the Eagles have a better chance of getting on track than the Cowboys on track. Their defense does, you're saying. Yeah, I mean, this what what Dave said, weakness on weakness in that particular passing game matchup. I, I mean, I, I, I see them Cowboys struggling more than I see the Eagles. Like, man, they don't stop anybody. I, I honestly think if they struggle, though, they will struggle because they're trying to beat their head against a brick wall. What I mean by that is they're trying to just run up the middle – knowing that that's the, the area where they are strong. I think if they are willing to do things that are not the things that they've been doing, if they're willing to run Dak a little bit, if they're willing to do some of that misdirection like you were talking about, if they're willing to utilize Cooper and, and their other receiving threats out on the outside and really exploit the weaknesses of this defense, I think they can have yeah. some success. But we haven't seen them consistently go into games and use those things. Uh, we've seen them more frequently say, we're going to run the ball even when running the ball isn't working. Well, and the, they are going to do – I mean, that's that's their identity, even though it doesn't work, which – so that's problematic. We know they're going to try to run the ball. It's just how they do it. And they have to. I, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying get away from the run. That's what you do. You still got to do it. But I think there are other ways that they can get these other facets of their offense going 
and that will only help you be able to run the ball when you want to run the ball. I All agree. Right. We appreciate you guys joining us back tomorrow. We'll get you guys ready for the game, tell you our predictions uh, for this weekend. Till then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about that?